One last thing we're going to do before we do a little recap is we're going to create a custom function within our player character class. And this is going to add inventory items to our player. So we can call this whatever we want. We'll just stick with the Bethesda standard as that's what I'm sure a lot of us are used to seeing if you've ever messed around with the command, uh, our console commands in their games. So we'll say def add item. And we want self because this is going to apply to an instance of this class. We want item and we want quantity. Actually, we should say item name. Now, in order to do this, we first have to check to see if item name already exists in self.inventory. What did I just do? Nothing, apparently. Okay. So, we're going to do a simple for loop. And we're going to say for uh, item, uh, let's see, actually, yeah, item in self dot invent inventory. And we're going to say if uh, item dot and item has name as its uh, name, obviously. Item dot name equals item name. Then we are going to increase that item's uh, quantity by, well, quantity. So we will say item dot quantity plus equals quantity. Now, if we get to the end of this loop and we still haven't found it, then we need to make a new item. So let's come back here and this will be our last line. If all this fails, if we can't find the item by the name provided, then we're just going to say self dot inventory dot append inventory item and we give it item name quantity all right we've added some new code now we're going to create some test code to make sure it works so here we have the original uh print we're going to say new player dot add item and we're going to go with we're going to do potion and we're going to add two now we're going to copy paste this and we're going to do a different one we're going to say uh let's come up with a brand new item to add to make sure that both uh, possible avenues this function can take will work. So let's say gold and we'll add 500 gold. And now no need to reinvent the wheel. We'll just call this print again. Save it and let's make sure it works. It does not work. What did we do wrong? For item in self.inventory, player character object has no, oh, it's capitalized. That's a mistake on my part. Self.inventory, lowercase. Always double check your autocorrect, or your autocomplete, or both. It's very easy for them to make mistakes uh, just as much as you. So double check it. I know I'm terrible at doing that, but do as I say, not as I do. So there we go. Well, almost. 
that didn't quite work. So we need to fix this. Ah, 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 I know, I know. That's the problem is it added it twice. Now, what we're going to do instead is when this works, we're going to return zero. And what this will do, we'll say that we're just defining zero as our, we found the item and we added it to the uh, list. Now, if this is the avenue we take, we want to return um, or no. We could send it as a code, but let's just print. Let's just do a print. Backtracking here, just because this is a little bit more simple. Print. Item added to existing stock. And then we want to just return none. We don't want to return. We want the function to end, but we don't actually want to send anything back. We don't really care. Uh, so if this works, we're going to print new item added to inventory. And then we're going to return none. Again, we're only returning none because we don't care. We would actually return something if an error were to occur. So make sure it's saved, and let's try this again. There we go. So now we have 12 potions, five antidotes, two smoke bombs, and 500 gold. Easy peasy. I just made some mistakes. And while we're here, let's further refine our string method here. Uh, because we actually want inventory, the word inventory, to line up with our other attributes. So there we go. Now we have further refined our uh, print as well. So let's do a quick recap of how we got to all of this. So the first thing that we did is we created a character class. This character held a name, a species, and an amount of hit points. These were just given directly to each object. And here is our print, our string that creates a string showing all of this information. We then created our player character, which derived from character, and it added an inventory to said character. So we have our super class. Its init function gets called. We pass name, species, and hit points, which then calls up to here and handles all this code. We then pass back down to this line. We move on and we add the inventory to the to our um, our player character. We then created a string function that uh, returns a stringification of our um, of our player character, which included its inventory and all of its other attributes, its name, species, and hit points. Lastly, we created an inventory item that would then be stored in the item, the inventory list. This contained name and quantity information, which we then handled accordingly in our add item and our dunder string methods. There's a lot to go over here. Take your time, practice, play with this. Don't be afraid to break the code. You're going to make mistakes. If I made mistakes in pretty much all of these videos, you're going to make mistakes as well. Embrace it. They're going to be how you learn. So, this concludes the required portions of all the uh, 
PowerPoints. Later on, we are going to look at how to break this out into two separate files. We're going to learn how to work with those two files, and that will be an important part of your final project. Additionally, we're going to look at topics like linting, error checking, how to spot and identify the problem within a stack trace, and things like that. Just some assorted bonus topics that are important, but they don't really fit into any of the core concepts that we've covered here. So stick around for that.